host Marcy Makai, Quality Assurance Manager Ego Nursing Home. I'm here to present a very interesting topic on interuterine contraceptive device. Interuterine co contraceptive device are devices that are physically fitted in the uterine cavity to prevent pregnancy. We have many types of IUCDs, we have hormonal and we have nanomono. For nanomono contraceptives you have Copati, Novati, Lipes Loop and something we call Motload. For hormonal in Kenya we have one type as per now called Mirena. Nanomono devices are in two categories. There is nanomono contraceptive, that is the Novati, the Copper T, and the Moat Load. They all have different shapes, almost the same, but they have copper in the middle. This is, this is Copper T. Copper T, this is copper, and this copper on the sides, and then this copper in the middle. For Nova T, which looks more like copper, we have copper in the middle, there's no copper on the sides. And then for Mot Load, we have, it's the shape of the Mot Load, is, this is the shape of the Mot Load. It is, it is plastic on the side and the shape is different from the copper T. And then we have copper in the middle. Then we have Lipes Loop. Lipes Loop has no copper at all. This is pure plastic. It is called Lipes Loop. We count Lipes Loop to be free from any medication. For Novati, for Copper T, and for Motload, we usually say there's medication of copper in the middle. The advantages of non hormonal coils are many. Number one, it does not interrupt sex. Like when you're using hormonal things, there are times that you can bleed in between the periods, you can start spotting, you can have pain, some, some hormonal changes in the body. But for the nanomonal contraceptives, rarely do you get these, these uh, complications like bleeding in between periods or spotting in between periods. Rarely does it happen. Mostly it happens if this, it has displaced itself. But as per se, it is very good. Like five, five to ten women will not will come with that kind of spotting. But it is corrected. That is for nanomono things. Uh, the, the device is you don't. It is very friendly, and it doesn't interfere with things like tenderness of the boobs, which happens doesn't bring tenderness of the boobs which happens when you're using something hormonal. Also, you can remove it at your own pace. You can actually insert like the nanomono is, uh, contraceptive today and you can decide you can remove it even after a few months, which is very okay. It is not going to interfere with your body changes because it is nanomono. The side effects of nanomono are like uh, the, this cramping after insertion but that one, you do the counseling on a patient, you tell them about uh, cramping after insertion. There is also uh, uh, spotting after insertion. There are people who can bleed like for a week or so after insertion. So before insertion, you're supposed to actually uh, counsel your patient and tell them about uh, what happens when uh, we insert the uh, nanomono coil. Nanomono coils, the side effects are minimal. But sometimes you get the side effects of severe cramping and discharges, infections. That is why you need to give adequate counseling before inserting the coil. Because you need to tell them about the hygiene, no changing of the sex partners. And if you're changing, use a backup method like a, 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 a coil, a, a cordon to avoid getting the infections. Because infection coils don't need, don't like infections. You're very sensitive. If you are a woman with a coil, your hygiene has to be like 100%, which you have to try. Uh, when you're having your period, make sure you, when you're changing your pad or, or you, use, you, you, you wash your hands so that you can change your, 
you pad when you, your hands are clean. And then at times for the coils, we actually try to discourage uh, use of tampons. Because most of the people when they're using the tampons, you, when you're inserting the tampon and you're using your hand, most of you in, in you introduce infections. Okay, the hormonal coil, as, as I said earlier, it's called Mirena. Mirena has progesterone hormone in it, or you can talk about lovanogestrone hormone in it. It's a very good coil, and it's a coil that uh, sometimes you usually see, you can insert, insert it with indications. Other times, there are people who can use it because it is hormonal. They have the fear of using the nanomono, which can get displaced and they get pregnant. Some of them would actually prefer using the hormonal coil. Uh, it has many, many advantages. We use the Mirena coil on women, on all ages of women. It can be the premenopausal women or also the teenagers, they can use the Mirena coil comfortably. Mirena helps women who get very heavy periods the, actually, it reduces the bleeding. It, help, it also uh, helps women who've got uh, uh, uterine fibroids or leomas and they have bleeding. If the leomas are not very big, that they need myomectomy or removal, then you can use the coil. The coil reduces the bleeding for when someone has the uterine fibroids or the leomas. It also treats something we call endometriosis. It's a condition in, that comes in the uterine cavity. And those women go through so much pain, like dysmenorrhea. Yeah, dysmenorrhea is painful periods. It also helps. And also endometriosis, people, women get severe uh, uh, lower abdominal pains. So it treats the endometriosis. It also treats uh, something we call endometrial hyperplasia. Endometrial hyperplasia most of the times comes due to uh, hormonal imbalance. So it can also, you can put to that women who are actually not ready to get pregnant. But with endometrial hyperplasia for a woman who wants to get pregnant, you cannot use the Mirena coil because you have to treat with other medications because uh, because the woman wants to get pregnant. If you put the mono coil, definitely that woman will not get pregnant because already the coil is in the body and also the, the, it is hormonal. So the, with high progesterone levels, it is hard for the woman to get to get pregnant. Sometimes people ask questions, can I get pregnant with Mirena coil? Say no. You cannot get pregnant with Mirena coil because it's a mono. But you, someone else will ask you, can I get pregnant with Copati, with Novati? Yes, you can. If the coil moves a little bit, of course the, 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 the sperm can swim in and you can get pregnant. If they, like those people who get heavy periods and you're using nanomono coil and then it displaces the pushing of the blood, uh, displaces the coil slightly, that woman can get pregnant. But you usually see the effectiveness is 99%. So we are talking of the 1% the of the women who can get pregnant. Uh, for Mirena, the same thing, those questions, it's a no that one cannot get pregnant. Even if the Mirena coil moves, you cannot get pregnant because it releases that uh, hormone that is the progesterone which cannot, cannot make you get pregnant. Uh, now about the complications of the coils. Mostly with nanomono, the complications are very minimal. The complications that we can get, unless if that coil was not inserted properly, it is uh, the dislodgement of the coil. We have gotten patients with whose uh, the coils have gone to the to the cavity, to like to the hip. That is not the coil that moved. That was the insertion, the insertion that was done that was not done properly. There was a problem with the insertion. Maybe the provider was not uh, was not trained for mono for for coil insertions, or there was a bit of force forcing enforcement uh, when you're doing the coil. You forced it inside, so it went outside the the uterine cavity. Most of the times, if you find something like that. Uh, like women will say, oh, the, the, the coil will go to the endometrium, I mean, will out of the uterus, it will go to the abdomen. 
it doesn't go on its own. It is during insertion that that coil goes to the abdomen or to the other parts of the body, but not during uh, that time when it was inserted and you say it moved out of the uterus towards the other parts of the body. No, it is during insertion that that thing was not properly inserted. Mirena gets, uh, has a bit of the side effects. I cannot say their complications as such, but let me term them as the side effects. Uh, people think that Mirena coil can cause breast cancer. How? It, is, it might be true, it might not be true, but our research is still going on on how the, coil, the Mirena coil can cause the breast cancer. Uh, Mirena causes like headaches, nausea, mood swings, all those things can be caused by the Mirena coil but uh, uh, we call them side effects, we cannot call, call them like the side effects as such and also there is weight gain and uh, some women get fat on the lower parts of the abdomen which makes them a little bit uncomfortable because they get like a pedulous abdomen uh, which which makes them feel a little bit uncomfortable. Again, let me talk about the ages that can take the coils. It is any age, as long as the the, 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 the woman is careful. It is any age can take the, the the coils. The IUCD may it be the hormonal, may it be the hormonal coil. From age 18 and above, it is okay. The, the woman can take the the coil and then for nanomonia the coil can stay in the body between five to ten years and but for mirena it mostly we talk about seven eight years that, that the woman can stay with the coil so anybody any fertile age you can use the coil but most of the people think uh the nanomono coil is fit for women up to around uh up to around 45 years they can use the coil up to around 60 there's no problem with that but uh, other people think that the hormonal coil uh, it's not favorable for women who are above 40 years 80 is actually that's why we are talking about premenopausal you can use a coil up to above around uh, for, uh, up to around uh, above above 50 years as long as you have no uh, health condition like diabetic, like hypertensive, like you have cancer which is active. We actually discourage some of those uh, women to have the, the hormonal coils because it is hormonal, the progesterone and the vanogesterone, then dealing with uh, the hypertension, dealing with the diabetic. Of course, you find like the, the, the sugar levels are not getting controlled they, because there's this hormone that is active in the body or the pressure is going up because there is low vanogesterone hormone in the body. The coils are very good because you don't need uh, the partner participation. But for these other hormonal things, you need your partner. Your partner is supposed to remind you, you didn't swallow your pill. You didn't, you didn't go, you, you have not gone for your depo provera. Your implants are supposed to be changed. The coils, you don't need your partner participation. It, it, it is just okay with, it, with all women. They can deal with it all alone without involving their partners. When you're inserting the coil, Number one, prepare your patient. Do antiquate counseling on that patient. Take the history. Get to know if the patient is a good candidate of coil that particular day. Because number one, you get to know if the patient is pregnant. Yes, so you have to do a few tests. You can do the urine test for pregnancy. You can also do the urine, the, the serum test for the pregnancy. Others, you also, from the history of the patient, you can also prefer doing um, a pelvic ultrasound. Like if a patient has been having irregular periods, you need to know, could this patient be having uh, hormonal problems? Could this patient be having uh, uterine fibroids? So you need to take the history, prepare the patient, and then at the same time, you need to know whether it's a good candidate. Like those people who have got multiple sex partners, you know, you, sometimes you have to discourage the coil because of your so-called infections. So that is why it's always good to do adequate counseling and take proper history from the patient before doing the, the insertion. So when you're doing the insertion, prepare your patient, 
let the patient go to the couch in a very comfortable way then make sure when you're doing the IUCD insertion your environment is sterile use a sterile speculum use a sterile uh, forcep especially to clean the genitalia of the patient and make sure you're using the sterile gloves because what well, you've seen the coil the the, the copper tea this copper tea has an inserter and it has something that crops because you have to put it inside this this introducer okay you you fold the top of the the, the, the copper tea put it inside the inserter so that now when you put inside the woman okay when you put it inside the woman then now you use this other one to push it inside but this one is now the digital one it has something that is going to you just uh, press it inside and this one goes inside the inserter but most of the places you find you don't have you don't have the you don't have this 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 inserter so that is where you need for those people who don't know the method of pulling and then you can use it you can put it in the inserter by pulling open here and pulling it inside then you need to put on sterile gloves so that you can put it uh, in the inserter in, inside the inserter for mouth load you don't need the inserter for the mouth load you just go inside with the inserter you just put it inside before you insert you're, you're supposed to use something we call uterine sound uh, that one you sound the uterus first then you get to go to know that the length between the cervix and the fundus of the uterus if it is seven centimeters you can see the blue the blue tip so you put if it is seven you put this one at seven centimeters you can see the graduations here you put at seven centimeters if it is eight you put this one at eight centimeters then you go inside the uterus you go to the fundus of the uterus okay and then you just when it gets there like for the motor you just pull the introducer out yeah this one doesn't have something to push inside because it is it is independent but for this other one you have this introducer this one the, the pusher that pushes inside so when you put in the uterine cavity yeah this one now you push and then pull it outside and pull completely outside okay for the lipase loop, the same thing. Lipase loop doesn't have an introducer. This is a lipase loop. So what we usually do is you get a copper tea introducer, okay? Then you put the lipase loop inside the introducer, okay? Just with sterile gloves. Note that you just put it inside and then now you go into the uterus, pull, then push it with this pusher okay so like that one now you're going to waste that copper tea which is not a problem because you need that woman to get what the woman desires for mirena most of the times mirena comes with a whole package of the introducer so you don't need anything outside to, to, to use outside the mirena package it's a box sorry i don't have it right now but it has a box it has an introducer and it's very sterile so you use actually for for mirena you need this uh, the sterile environment and the introduction is usually very simple for the for the mirena to be inserted it is always to have a trained provider to put the IUCDs. It's very, very important to avoid getting the coils not introduced properly, and then you find them they've been introduced, they've not been uh, properly inserted. All these coils have got strings, and you can see the string. You can see the strings. After introducing the coils in, inside the uterus, these strings are left outside the cervix so what you do after after introduction now you're supposed to use sterile scissors and trim this tree to a level whereby the man is not going to complain about it if it's breaking the man you need to come back to the facility so that you can trim the string uh, uh, shorter but sometimes you can leave the string and there's no man is going to complain about but we realize that when you, you leave long strings outside the woman is uh, is exposed to many infections that's why we prefer trimming this uh, string to the size of the cervix and also when you're doing the iucd removal now you're supposed to remove using the forceps so you're supposed to 
grip the string using the forceps and then you pull it outside the uterus okay and if the, you, you cannot see during the time of the removal if you cannot see this string at all there's something called alligator forceps so you are supposed to go inside the uterus and this one is supposed to be done by a qualified provider you're supposed to go inside the uterus with the, with the alligator forceps clip the string from inside and then pull it out not everybody who can use the alligator forceps if the patient or the client comes to your facility and you don't have the alligator forceps and you cannot see the strings also we recommend do an ultrasound first if you find that you the, the uh, coil is inside and you cannot see the string you can refer that patient to a facility whereby the qualified provider can use those alligator forceps here at ego nursing home we have providers who are trained we offer all the family planning methods, may it be the pills, may it be the implants, the IUCDs that I've talked about, the condoms, the uh, permanent methods like uh, bi-tube legation, that is the BTL, and then the vasectomy for men. We do all these methods. There's no method that you can miss in Ego Nursing Home. Ego Nursing Home is here to see the health of women is up to date and it's 100 percent and women are happy we are here to offer services to the less fortunate people and that is why we are here in the slums and we don't regret being in the slums because ego is doing the best ego is just climbing the ladder because of helping the less fortunate